The C-SPAN Civics Bus is traveling the country, visiting libraries, bookstores, festivals, and authors. Here are some of the people and places we visited. We're here at the Lexington Public Library's Beaumont Branch with Bob Sloan, a contributor to the book Missing Mountains, We Went to the Mountaintop But It Wasn't There, co-author of Valley of the Shadow, and author of several books on life in Appalachia. What's the mountaintop removal tour? Uh, a Kentucky writer with a, a national reputation named Wendell Berry uh, invited about a total, I suppose about a hundred regional writers to go with him to down into the coal fields of eastern Kentucky to observe firsthand the impact of mountaintop removal coal mining on the land and the people down there. Uh, mountaintop removal is just what it sounds like. They, they blast the tops of mountains loose, bulldoze everything off to get these little thin seams of coal. Now it's a, economically it's, it's a very cheap way to get at coal, but what they do with this, uh, the stuff they don't want, the fill they call it, they just scrape it anywhere. So they fill up rivers with it, they, uh, they just shove it off and what they create is a great wide plateau where there were mountains. Um, it destroys rivers, destroys communities. Uh, and it's, a, it's an environmental holocaust because in Kentucky, uh, everybody lives downstream from mountaintop removal sites, which means our drinking water is contaminated, uh, which means uh, our air is contaminated from uh, all the things that, that, that go into this. And it's, uh, so in any case, we did this first tour and because we were all writers, it occurred to, to us to uh, what we could do is do a book, so we did one. And I think there are about 25 or 30 contributors to that, that first book, uh, Missing Mountains, and uh, all kinds of writers, Bobby, some, some of whom have a, a real national reputation like Bobby Ann Mason who wrote In Country and some other things, Wendell Berry of course, Silas House, and then others of us who are probably known more regionally. Uh, and there's poetry and there's, uh, and there's some fiction in there. And it's uh, basically it's just our reaction, our response to, to what we saw on this tour. And how did you contribute to the book Missing Mountains? Uh, at the time I was, uh, <coughs> excuse me, at the time I was writing regular columns for the Lexington Herald Leader and two of my columns were included in there. And I'm very proud of that uh, because uh, mountaintop removal coal mining is a big issue in Kentucky, it's going to be a big issue nationally. Uh, we're finally getting an administration, I think, that, that's going to be willing to listen to to some of the concerns of people that have to live with this. So, uh, Missing Mountains and, and a few other books uh, are, I think, having a, a big impact on that on that whole that whole issue, that whole problem. As a Kentucky resident, what was your biggest revelation doing your research for Missing Mountains? what it looked like. Uh, until very recently, uh, mountaintop removal was deliberately done way off the road, you know. So you, you could drive through some, some wonderful country, just beautiful, you know, forested areas. And what you would know is right on the other side of the ridge, it looked like the moon. Uh, but because of the greed uh, of the, the coal industry, it's starting to come out there's, a, there's an area uh, near Hazard, Kentucky, where a mountaintop removal site was occurring right next to, and I mean literally right next to Highway 80. And uh, there was a documentary filmmaker from California who was out here for a while, uh, who uh, went with me down to Whitesburg. I was gonna do an interview down there. And I'll, I'll never forget, uh, you're driving on Highway 80 through this you know, like I said, beautiful timbered area, and it, it's pretty. It's 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 what Kentucky is, Eastern Kentucky, which is hills and valleys and whatnot. You crest a hill, and this thing just hits you in the eye. It's just boom, you're in it. And I remember we were in a little uh, uh, Volkswagen, and as soon as we crested that hill, this guy stomped his brake, 
and said something I probably shouldn't say here. Mm -hmm. And I said, go on, man. I mean, we had coal trucks behind us, you know, and I said, go on. You can't stop here. So we did a U-turn so he could photograph some of that. But the, the visual impact of it uh, immediately, and we flew over it. Um, one of the things that uh, uh, impressed me during a, an overflight was uh, they have these slurry ponds, uh, which are where the poison water is stored. And what happens uh, occasionally, these ponds break and they flood, you know, they flood people's property and whatnot. And uh, I asked the, the pilot, I said, how big is that pond down there? Because we were over site, it was just enormous, you know. And he said it was uh, about 10 acres. And an acre, I believe, I used to know how many football fields that was, but I mean, it was just, it was phenomenal to look down at this huge expanse of poison water surrounded by this huge expanse of absolutely nothing. You know, the when they do MTR, nothing is left. There's nothing green down there. And uh, I had a, a chance one time years ago to fly across Death Valley. And you can see green things in Death Valley. That's supposed to be one of the deadest places on Earth, you know. But if you fly over Death Valley, you see things growing. Not an MTR site. You can view Book TV programs, sign up for a weekly email of our schedule, and learn about upcoming programs at booktv.org. You can click on the Viewer Input tab and email us. Tell us what you're reading and what you think of our programs.